Okay, everyone, these are the eight classwork assignment or classwork problems that we worked on kind of Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in class. There's eight of them, um, and they kind of parallel your quiz. So I wanted to work these out for you um, so that if you get stuck on a problem in your quiz, that you have something that you can come back to and look at. Um, so the directions for this particular problem right here are simplify. Um, a very good habit to get into as soon as you look at these problems um, is to go ahead and factor. Factoring is, um, you know, one of those things that doesn't go away. Um, so we're going to factor this. So I have x squared minus 2x minus 15. My product is negative 15. My sum is negative 2. So fortunately, it is... Um, a factoring problem where our a value is one. So that does tend to make it a little easier. Uh, we're looking for a product of negative 15, sum of negative two. So that's gonna be negative five and positive three. Okay, so x squared minus two x minus 15 factors to x minus five and x plus three. Um, the bottom problem is x squared plus x minus six. So we're gonna factor that as well. Um, the the product that I'm looking for is negative six, and the sum that I'm looking for is positive one. Again, our a value is one, um, so that makes factoring a little bit more direct. And here, we're gonna have x plus three and x minus two, okay? At this point, we look at what shows up in both the top and the bottom, um, and if it shows up in both the top and the bottom, we mark it out. And so I have x plus 3 and x plus 3. And so my final answer here is going to be x minus 5 over x minus 2. And I just want to remind you that x minus 5 is a unit. It's a unit. And my x minus 2 is a unit. So my two x's cannot cancel. And whenever you're stuck and you're not sure how that works, plug in a number for that for that x. So if I put 2 in for x and 2 minus 5, that's going to be negative 3. Then in the bottom I get 0. So 2 minus 2 is 0. So those are not the same thing and they can't be canceled. Um, so that is, is one way to look at it to see that you can't, you can't cancel those two x's out because they're not being multiplied. Um, they are um, binomials and those binomials are a unit. Okay, so our next one does not have any binomials. Um, we are still simplifying, but everything is being multiplied together. So we have negative 28x squared y to the fifth over 4x to the fourth y. Okay, so I always focus on my numbers first. I always focus on my numbers first. So I have negative 28 and positive 4. The number that goes into 28 and 4 is 4. 4 goes into 28 seven times, and it's super important that you don't lose that negative. Students forget about that negative sometimes. 4 goes into 4 one time, so I have focused on my numbers. Now the next thing I'm going to focus on is my x squared and my x to the fourth. Now remember, x squared means x times x x to the fourth means x times x times x times x. Now, our exponent rules say that we subtract those exponents, okay? So we've got a two and we've got a four. Now, our denominator has more of the x's. So that is, that's the one that has more. So when we subtract them, we're gonna have two left over and those x's are gonna be in the denominator, okay? So if you think about what I have over here, um, x cancels with x, x cancels with x, and I'm left with the one in the top. But your, your x squared is in the bottom, and so we have that same thing um, in our original problem. The leftover x's are in the bottom. The opposite is true with y to the fifth over y. Um, this is a y to the first, so in the bottom, you've got y to the first. We subtract the five minus one. The extra y's are in the numerator, and so that's where we put our four. So my final answer here, and you have to be super careful not to forget anything, is negative seven y to the fourth over x squared. And that is my final answer. Okay. 
Our next one we are now multiplying, okay? So we've got four different um, polynomials. Um, they, we've got two that are being, it's 3y squared plus 12y over y to the third minus 2y squared. Then we are multiplying that by another rational expression, y squared minus 3y plus 2 over y squared plus 7y plus 12. So the first thing that you're gonna do is factor. It's a good habit to get into, just factor first. Okay, so I'm gonna do my numerator. I can take a three y out and I'm left with y plus 12. No, I'm not, I'm left with um, y plus four. Sorry about that. So I took a three y out and I'm left with y plus four because 3y times y is y squared, 3y times 4 is 12y. Now in my denominator, I'm able to take a y squared out. So I have y squared, and then I have y minus 2. Okay, then I have two trinomials over here that I need to factor. Um, my product is 2, my sum is 3, negative 3, so I'm going to have y minus 2 and y minus 1. Okay, and they're both negative because our sum, our product is positive, so a negative times a negative gives us a positive, and our sum is negative, so negative 2 plus negative 1 is negative 3. So in my denominator, I've got a sum of 7 and a product of 12, so I am left with y plus 4 and y plus 3. So now that I have factored everything, and that's definitely the first thing that you do, I'm going to start canceling what is on the top and the bottom. So here I've got y minus 2, and I have y minus 2, so I'm canceling that. I always start with my cross cancel. Um, then I have y plus 4 and y plus 4, so I can cancel that. Now I want you to look at my 3y over y squared. Now this is... They're both in the same rational expression, but you've still got a y in the numerator and a y squared in the denominator. So we can cancel that. My y cancels completely in the numerator. My squared disappears. So I am left with 3 over y. That is being multiplied by y minus 1 over y plus 3. So my final answer to this is 3 times y minus 1 over y times y plus 3. This is my final answer. You could multiply that out if you wanted to. There's really no reason to um, because you can't simplify it any further. Um, I would accept either one of these for full credit, um, but it's not necessary to multiply it out unless you just want to. Okay, now the next one we are doing division. So we have, um, we have, actually we have division and multiplication. Oh, I think I skipped one. Okay, I think I did. I think I didn't write down. Okay, sorry about that. I found the one that was missing. I shifted through the slides too much. So this is division. And so what we're gonna do is we are gonna keep we are going to change and we're going to flip. Okay, keep change flip. And I encourage you to write this down. If you get too quick and you try to um, skip steps, then sometimes we get in trouble and we make mistakes. So we keep our first rational, which is 6xy over x squared minus 6x plus 9. We change our division sign to multiplication. And then we flip, and that's actually the mathematical term for that is the reciprocal. So I have x squared minus 9 over 18x. Now that I have changed my division to multiplication, I'm going to factor. Now 6 times x times y, there's all of that's being multiplied together. So I just write that down. x squared minus 6x plus 9, that is actually a perfect square trinomial but I am gonna write that as x minus three times x minus three. Now you don't have to be able to recognize that as a perfect square trinomial. Most students don't realize it is until they see that the answers repeat or that the factored form repeats. Um, 
negative 3 times negative 3 gives me positive 9. Negative 3 plus negative 3 gives me negative 6. Um, I always like to point that out, but it's, it's, it's just not as important that you recognize it as it is with difference of perfect squares. And here, with x squared minus 9, we do have difference of perfect squares, so you do have to be able to recognize that. We're left with x plus 3 and x minus 3. Then I'm going to rewrite my 18x. Now, I have an x minus 3, and I have an x minus 3. I have an x here, and I have an x here, okay? My 6 goes into 6 one time. 6 goes into 18 three times, okay? So my answer to this one is y in the numerator times x plus 3 in the numerator over 3 times x minus 3 in the denominator. And again, if you wanted to multiply those out, you could. Um, it's not necessary. I will give you full credit for either answer. Okay. Now, our next one involves multiplication and division. Um, so the thing that we're going to do here is we are going to change this division sign to multiplication. Okay. So our division sign right there becomes multiplication. And this 3xy over 10 that is what gets flipped, or that's what we make the reciprocal, okay? We're gonna keep this because it's our first. This is already multiplication, so we also keep this. The only thing that gets changed is what follows the division sign, okay? So I am going to rewrite this now. I have 6xy to the third over 5x, that is being multiplied by 10 over 3xy. I changed that division to multiplication and I, I flipped. That's the reciprocal of 10 over 3xy is the reciprocal of 3xy over 10. Then I've got y over 7x squared. Now for this one, I don't have anything that I can factor because there's no addition and there's no subtraction. Everything here is being multiplied. So what we do now is we look at um, the y's, we look at the 6's, we look at the numbers, and we see what can cross cancel. So the first thing that I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at my numbers. So that means I'm looking at 6, 5, 10, 3, and 7. Is there anything in these that I can cancel? So the first thing I'm going to look at is the 6. 3 goes into this 6 twice. 3 goes into this 3 one time, okay? The next thing that I'm going to look at is my 10 and my 5. 5 goes into 10 twice. 5 goes into 5 one time, okay? Now, I'm going to start canceling variables. I'm going to start canceling variables, okay? This x in the numerator can cancel with this x right here, okay? I have a y in the numerator right here, and it can cancel with this y in the denominator. So now I've just got x's in the denominator, and I've just got y's in the numerator. So I can't cancel anything else. So I'm going to do 2 times 2, which is 4. And then I have y to the third left in my numerator. In the denominator, the only number I have left is 7. I, I do have some 1's, but 7 times 1 times 1 is still 7. And then I have x to the third left in the denominator. So this right here is my final answer. Now, one of the things I want you to notice, make note of this, this is all multiplication and division. Okay? There is nothing, there's no polynomials in here. There's no binomials in here. We are not adding and subtracting anything. We are multiplying everything. And so I think that sometimes we get caught up in that and, and we start trying to factor like we did here. But there's nothing to factor here because everything's being multiplied together. Um, and so it's good to kind of look at the different things and see how you do that. Okay, now we are going into addition and subtraction. And so we actually have to change our thinking a little bit. 
Um, so we are adding and we are subtracting. So any time that we add and subtract, we have to have an LCD, okay? So for us to determine what our LCD is, we are going to focus on the denominators, okay? So I'm really only looking at my four, my three, and my six. We have to focus on denominator, okay? So we're not really focused on the numerator yet. So what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna look at that four right there, and I'm gonna break that four down as much as I can. So we, we are factoring it. What, what we're doing is we're breaking it down into primes. So four breaks down to two times two, okay? Then my next one is two over three. Three is prime already, so we don't do anything else with that three. We just leave it as three. Then I have minus five over six, and that six can break down to two and three. Now, for my LCD, the first thing I do is I go ahead and I write down whatever shows up in that first fraction. So I've got two times two in that first fraction. So that's where I started, two times two. Now, I look at this fraction right here. I have a three in the denominator. So I go over to my LCD and I ask myself, is a three already accounted for? And it's not. So because it's not, I put a three as part of my LCD. Then I go to my last one, which is negative five over six. And there is a two already in my LCD and there's a three already in my LCD. So I don't have to write that down again. I don't have to write that down again. Okay, now for this step, I'm gonna go ahead and move my negative to the top. So I have negative three in my numerator. Then I have two times two in the denominator. So what I ask myself now is in this fraction right here, I have a two and I have a two. So my LCD has a two and it has a two. I don't have the three. So what I have to do is I have to multiply the denominator by three. Because I am multiplying the denominator by three means I also have to multiply my numerator by three. That's how I decide what to multiply my denominator and my numerator by. Now, my next one is two over three. So again, I go and I look. Okay, I've got a three here and I've got a three here. What am I missing? I am missing a two and a two. So here, I do times two times two. If I do it in the bottom, I also have to do it in the top, okay? Now my last one, I'm gonna move my subtraction to the top, and then I have two times three. So for this, I have a two and I have a three already accounted for, but I am missing a two, and I need to erase some of this. And so because I have to multiply my denominator by two, I also have to multiply my numerator by two. So what I've done now is I've made every one of these like my LCD. My LCD is two times two times three, okay? Now I just multiply out the numerator. So negative three times three is negative nine. I am adding that to two times two times two, which is eight. And then I've got negative five times positive two, which is negative 10, okay? So when I do negative nine plus positive eight, I get negative one. Negative one plus negative 10 is negative 11. So my final answer to this is negative 11 over 12, okay? And that is my final answer, okay? Now we are gonna use these same principles for our next problem, okay? So here I have two x over three y squared plus three y over four x. So I am gonna break my denominators. I'm not doing anything with my numerators, okay? I am just dealing with my denominators. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my three. That's prime, I can't do anything else with that. Then I've got y squared. Sometimes it's helpful just to think about y squared is y times y. You don't have to, but sometimes it's helpful to. 
Then I have 4x, 4 breaks down to 2 times 2, and then I have my x. So the first thing I'm going to do for my LCD is I'm going to start with my first denominator. So I'm going to look at this denominator right here. I have 3 times y times y. Okay. Then when I look at my second denominator, I say, okay, I've got 2 times 2. Is 2 times 2 already accounted for in my LCD? The answer to that is no, it isn't already accounted for. So I have to add, or I'm not adding, I have to include 2 times 2 in my denominator. Then I also have an x, so I look and see if the x is already written down, and it's not. So then I have times x. So I have 3 times y times y times 2 times 2 times x. So my LCD is all of that written out. 3 times 2 times 2, and we will multiply it in just a minute. Um, but sometimes I think it makes it easier to see when we leave it broken down. Now what I want to do is I want to focus on what is not included in each individual denominator. So we've already focused on 2x over 3y squared. Um, so we have the 3 and we have the y and the y. So I've got 3, y, y. I don't have 2 times 2 times x. So because that's missing, I have to multiply this denominator by 2 times 2 times x. So if I do that there, I also have to do it in the numerator. Okay? Now, for my second one, I already have 4x, or 2 times 2 times x. And that is accounted for right here. So I am missing the 3 times y times y. So I'm going to multiply my bottom, 3 times y times y. So I also have to do that on the numerator, 3 times y times y. Now I have everything written as its least common, or using my least common denominator. So now I'm going to multiply my numerators. So I have 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And I have x times x, which is x squared. Okay, my second numerator, I have 3 times 3, which is 9. And then I have y times y times y, which is y to the third. Now, you cannot cancel any of your x's and your y's. The reason for that is 8x squared plus 9y to the third is a binomial. You can't cross cancel any of that. So you need to be careful there. There's no cross canceling or there's no simplifying there's anything because you've got 8x squared plus 9y to third in the numerator as a binomial. In order to cancel that, you would have to have that exact binomial being added together in the denominator, and we don't have that. At this point, we multiply the denominator out so that we can have a final answer. 8x squared plus 9y to the third over 12xy squared. Okay, now we are going to use those same principles um, with trinomials as your denominator. So here I have 2 over x squared minus 2x minus 3 minus 5 over x squared plus 5x plus 4. First thing I would do is go ahead and move that negative to the numerator. So it's going to be much easier for you to deal with that. Then what I want you to do is factor each of these. So I have x squared minus 2x minus 3. That factors to x plus 1 times x minus 3. Okay? Because 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. Now my other rational expression is negative 5 over x squared plus 5x plus 4. So I am going to have x plus 1 and x plus 4. Okay? Because 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 plus 4 is 5. So now I want to focus on my LCD. 
So I start here. I just always start with my first rational or my first fraction. And I write down what's included in that denominator. So I have x plus one, x minus three. Then I go to my second denominator and I look to see if anything's already accounted for. My x plus one is already accounted for, so I don't have to write that down again. But x plus four is not. So that has to be made part of my, my least common denominator. So what has to happen in your least common denominator is every one of these factors in the denominators have to be accounted for. So I have x plus one, x minus three, x plus one is already right there, and then I have x plus four right here. So they are all accounted for. So now I want to rewrite this so we can figure out what I need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by. So I have two in my numerator. In my denominator for my first rational, I have x plus one and x minus three. Then I have negative five in my numerator, and then I have x plus one times x plus four. So I look at my first denominator. I have x plus one and x minus three. X plus one is accounted for, and x plus three is accounted for, but I don't have my x plus four. So I've got to multiply my denominator by x plus four, and since I multiply my denominator by x plus four, I have to multiply my numerator times x plus four. Okay, so now we're looking at our second rational. So I have x plus one and I have x plus four. Okay, so I have x plus one and x plus four. So what I'm missing is x plus three. So what I have to do is I have to multiply my denominator times x minus three. And if I multiply my denominator by x minus three, I have to multiply my numerator by it as well. So now my denominator is covered and I don't need to multiply that out. You certainly can if you want to, but it is a little bit extensive. Okay, but you don't have to. Um, and now I need to distribute. So I need to distribute my two and I need to distribute my negative five. So I end up with two x plus eight and minus five x plus 15. So that's negative five times x, which is negative five negative five times negative three, um, which is positive 15. So at this point, I actually do have one more step. Um, so I'm gonna write my final answer right here. So this is where my final answer is gonna be. Um, my denominator stays the same and I do not have to multiply that out. If you do, you will still get full credit. Okay, but then I have two x and negative five x. So that gives me negative three x. Then I have 8 and I have 15 and that gives me 23. Okay, so that is my final answer. Um, so just a couple things that um, I want you to be aware of. I'll also announce these in class. Um, your test um, is coming up. So your test on chapter um, 4, and we aren't doing all of chapter 4, um, is going to be Monday or Tuesday, depending on which class you're in. That doesn't mean that you have the choice to take it on Monday and Tuesday. It only means that if you have class on Monday, your test is on Monday. If you have class on Tuesday, your test is on Tuesday. So on Monday, March 18th, um, that's when your test is gonna be. If you are on my Tuesday, Thursday class, um, your test is gonna be on March 19th. Okay, and so that is coming up um, right before spring break. We will start some linear stuff before spring break. So you're not done after this. You're still going to have class the rest of that week before spring break. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and announce that test for you. Um, I will post um, practice tests this week, probably by Wednesday. Um, the practice tests will be posted. Um, and then I'll do video solutions to one of the practice tests. Okay, contact me if you have any questions, and I will talk to you soon.